All right, folks. Uh, as I said early, uh, it appears that FEMA is running out of hurricane money. Yeah, that's right. Um, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. You have to say Alejandro Mayorkas because he's Cuban. Rum told reporters on Wednesday that the Federal Emergency Management Agency does not have enough funding to last the rest of this year. Now, the DHS oversees FEMA, putting him in charge of the Emergency Relief Agency. He says, we are meeting the immediate needs with the money we have, he told reporters, but we are expecting another hurricane hitting and FEMA does not have the funds to make it through this season. The startling admission by Alejandro Mayorkas comes as FEMA is grappling with the damage of Hurricane Helene, which was a Category 4 hurricane that ripped through the Southeast and is already, is already cost billions of dollars in damages. There's also widespread infrastructure damage, food shortages, and there's been over 100 deaths. So President Joe Biden said earlier that he may call on Congress to pass for more funding for FEMA. He said FEMA has what it needs for immediate response, for immediate response and recovery efforts. As a FEMA administrator, Deanne Criswell has said she has the full authority to spend against the president's budget, but we are not out of hurricane season yet, so we just need to keep a close eye on it, said, and that was said by the Director of Public Affairs and FEMA spokesperson Jacqueline Rothenberg. We may need to go back into immediate needs funding, and we will be watching it closely. Now, the hurricane season is expected to last until the end of next month. That is November. So good God. Just imagine. Just imagine. We are in one of the most contentious elections ever. Right here. One of the most contentious elections of all time. With uh, obviously Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Oh, by the way, I voted this week. That's right. I, I went to early voting right here at the... Uh, library yesterday they hooked me up i was in and out in five minutes i always tell you guys vote early do not wait to election day when there will be lines around the building don't do it i, I every thursday you could vote until 7 p.m right here at the library if you're from the city of gary here take advantage and i think every other day you can vote until three o'clock during the week take advantage Please take advantage. Do not wait to the last moment. But we have a very important election coming up. Can you imagine if we have more hurricanes sweeping through much of these heavily populated southern and east coast states? Good God. That would be catastrophic. Already we see North Carolina, which is a battleground state. North Carolina is considered one of the states that will decide the election and right now we're dealing with cities like Asheville North Carolina being almost wiped off the map so we're going to have to keep an eye on that now this funding short haul fall has come under scrutiny at a time when at least $640 million in FEMA funds is being sent on, spent on assisting communities across the country dealing with an influx of immigrants. Now, when, when, when asked about the, the FEMA dollars that were being spent on immigrants, this is what Corinne Jean-Pierre had to say. Trump is accusing the Biden administration of using FEMA funding to support undocumented migrants. How is the White House responding to this? I mean, it's just categorically false. It is not true. It is a false statement. Uh, and look, 
the fact of the matter is, I think Washington Post fact checker uh, did a piece, and the headline recently, just moments ago, not too long ago, and the headline was, no, Biden did not take uh, female relief uh, money to use uh, to use on migrants, but Trump did. Okay. Now, this is actually from Colorado. Colorado has recently said that something that might be a little bit different. The influx of migrants continues to have an impact across the nation and certainly here at home in Colorado. Denver alone housing nearly 4,600 migrants right now. Other cities in the state stepping up to help, but they say they cannot do it alone. And now nonprofits and local senators and representatives are asking for more help from the federal government. Fox 1 political reporter Gabrielle Franklin is on it. Gabrielle. Yeah, Erica, it's something that city leaders here in Denver have been calling on for a while. More federal help from the government to aid migrants. Now the calls are growing louder and the patience is getting thin. We have never received on the migrant response direct support from the federal government. Amanda Blaurock is a co-founder of the Village Exchange Center in Aurora. The center helps anywhere between five to 700 families a week providing wraparound services. We do have support via the state, the Office of New Americans. Uh, we have about 250,000 uh, that we received that came from the FEMA dollars of 2.5 million that came to the state. Um, that money is used for our food pantry um, that helps supply um, hygiene products, our security guards, and also food to individuals that are here. The funds they received from the state just started going towards their work in December. I don't think we should leave Denver or Colorado and holding the financial end of the stick. The federal government needs to step in and help, and it should. U.S. Senator Michael Bennett and Colorado's other Democratic congressional members wrote a letter to FEMA this month, urging the federal government to step up by increasing funding for FEMA's shelter and services program to include more cities and nonprofits. Bennett saying relief should be coming soon. Hopefully, they're, they're going to be, be able to respond relatively quickly to the things they can do administratively. There are some things that we're probably going to have to do legislatively. And as you know, I've been involved for months in this effort to try to get a bipartisan agreement on immigration done as part of the supplemental that is covering Ukraine and Israel and some other matters. And it does feel like we're finally coming to an agreement. So what exactly is FEMA? spending on immigrants you see how how slick the government is like the government sends their spokesperson out like no no fema dollars are going to immigrants but you gotta you gotta read between the lines you gotta read between the lines so what is fema spending on the immigrants the shelter and it's called ssp the shelter and services program provides funding to non-federal agencies to spend on humanitarian services for non-us citizens immigrants for the 2024 fiscal year which ended on monday 640 million dollars was made available for this program the fema website says that this is this funding is intended to support the cbp the u.s custom customs and border protection in the safe and orderly and humane release of non-citizen migrants from, from short-term holding facilities. This money can be spent on a range of services, including food, shelter, transportation, acute medical care, clothing, and translation services. The budget for the past year was a significant increase from the 2023 fiscal year when $363 million was allocated. So together, more than $1 billion. That's $1 billion that has been sent on non-citizens over the last two years. One billion dollars. Why they're throwing a, a funky $750 at, P, at American citizens who just had their entire lives wiped out. Now, FEMA's fiscal 2025 budget also includes $22.7 billion dollars for the disaster relief fund which covers costs for previously declared disasters this pot does not cover potential future events given that they are unpredictable 
Hurricane Helene struck at the end of one fiscal year and the beginning of another, while Congress was also in the middle of budget negotiations to avoid a government shutdown, complicating this even more. The DRF, the Disaster Relief Fund, was recently facing a $2 billion deficit far higher than the $650 million allocated to it and the SSP, and that was before Hurricane Helene hit landfall on September 25th when Congress passed a resolution to keep the federal government open. Extra cash for the DRF was left out without some members' knowledge. I see you, caller. Hold on. I got to get through the, the story. While the resolution did not include a temporary injection of $20 billion for FEMA to tap into, and that cash is not just for the disaster in the past week, but for communities which faced flooding and fires earlier this year. Leaders of both chambers have reportedly got together to remove the extra funding in an effort to get the overall resolution passed, while Republicans... Here you go, including Florida Representative Matt Gates voted against the resolution anyway, voted against the re resolution to provide more funding for Americans just before Hurricane Helene hit the state. And you see, guys, how our government works. Our government is always saying, look, we can't, we can't afford this, we can't afford to do that. But then you see them spending money for the military-industrial complex in Ukraine, Israel, for illegal immigrants, and then they say, oh, no, 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 no. That's th this specific type of funding right here. No, 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 that's not for that. That's this type of, it's essentially they're saying, I'm wearing a pair of pants. I've got $10 in, w in one pocket, my left pocket. I've got $20 in my right pocket. But somehow, somehow, I, I, I got to pretend that What's in the left pocket and what's in the right pocket aren't a part of the same pair of pants. They are in the same pair of pants. <laughs> if I have $10 in my left pocket and $20 in my right pocket, I have $30. Everybody. But this is how our government re rationalizes ways to continue to spend money on things that will enrich the military industrial complex and enrich the banksters and people like BlackRock and Vanguard and all these other en entities. And while at the same time telling us we have nothing, they're only telling us, well, what's in the left pocket is, uh, that's all you get. What's in the right pocket, that's something totally different. Well, it's the same pair of pants, everybody. It's the same pair of pants. The fact that you don't want to put what's in the left pocket with the right pocket is a choice. That is a choice. You are choosing to spend billion, $200 billion on arming Ukraine and fighting this proxy war with Russia. You are choosing to spend money to give money to Israel, billions upon billions upon billions to commit genocide in Gaza and now in Lebanon. And then you send hundreds of millions to Lebanon after giving Israel the weapons to bomb Lebanon. This is a choice. This is a choice. They act like, oh, there's just nothing we can do about it. Oh, well, good God. Let me take this caller. Hello, caller. Good evening. I'm enjoying your program. What's going but, on? Hey, you just like the rest of us in this United States. We, we all just got to go and bend over and get what we've been getting all these years. Yep. And I can say you got a hundred and something billions of dollars you're sending to Ukraine. Yep. All this money to the service. And then you tell somebody, uh, oh, we, we don't have it. If you need this for your city, this is, we just don't have the funds. We're going to have to shut the government down and see what we're going to do because we don't have the funds. But you can always come up with billions of dollars to help somebody else out. Yep. And we've been getting it stuck up our butts all these years, and it ain't going to get no better. I heard It's that. not going to get no better. So, hey, uh, uh, smoke a cigarette and, and, <laughs> and bend over like the rest of us so we all get it. <laughs> Thanks for calling, brother. <laughs> Thank you, my man. It's all good. 
I, I, I refuse to be that pessimistic about it. To me, I think it can get better, but us as a 330 million Americans have to stop going along with the program. That is why I have removed myself from the two-party duopoly. I don't support either. I've been open. I don't support either candidate. I don't support Trump. I don't support Kamala. I don't support the Republicans. I don't support the Democrats. Okay. Now, locally, I might have a certain, uh, I might vote a certain way, but when it comes to the national parties, the parties that uh, essentially, you know, get uh, decide the direction of our government, I have nothing but contempt and and uh, disdain for those people, and I refuse to participate in what they are trying to sell me. I refuse. I absolutely refuse. There has to be a reckoning for these people. They do not deserve to continue to get our votes. They do not con con deserve to continue to, to get the permission and the consent that they need to govern over us. They don't. They don't deserve it. We should not be donating to these money people's campaigns. We should not be casting our vote for these people who do these types of things. Now, again, you would be an extremely, I believe, naive person to think that this is not being done on purpose. Why would they tell Americans that they have nothing for us while at the same time finding ways to fund, provide services for illegal immigrants or for just migrants in general. As I told you guys a long time ago, I played on, on this show many times what Dick Durbin, the senator from Illinois, guy I've been watching since I was a little kid when, before Obama even, he's always been there. And very recently, he let the cat out of the bag. Why? Why they are so intent on resettling our cities and seeding our communities with uh, all these immigrants. And you have to hear it for yourself. This is what he had to say. To remove from being an immigrant to this country. And yet, there's been resistance throughout our history. Unless we needed cheap labor to build the transcontinental railroad when we invited Chinese workers to come in. We treated them, unfortunately, in an inhumane fashion and didn't give them largely eligibility to become citizens. But we needed the labor. We needed the workers. It's happened many times before. What troubles me about the debate now about the southern border is it is one half of the immigration equation. Yes, we need order at the border. Yes, we need to have changes in the laws that reflect the reality of the overwhelming numbers from all over the world who are coming to our, our shores and our border. But there is also an incredible demand for legal immigration into this country even now. The presiding officer, my colleague from the state of Illinois, has legislation which addresses one aspect of that. Her bill, and I hope I describe it accurately, says that if you are an undocumented person in this country, and you can pass the physical and the required test, background test, the like. You can serve in our military, and if you do it honorably, we will make you citizens of the United States. Do we need that? Do you know what the recruiting numbers are at the Army and the Navy and the Air Force? They can't reach their quotas each month. They can't find enough people to join our military forces. And there are those who are undocumented who want the chance to serve and risk their lives for this country. And there you go. The Army, the Air Force, the Navy, they can't meet their quotas. And you have all these immigrants who can be directly shipped off to, I guess, whatever World War III hotspot they got for us. Because they seem to be very intent on starting World War III on all fronts the people that run this country, the real people, because we all know Joe Biden is not in charge. <laughs> I tried telling y'all months ago that that man was demented and was gone. It was obvious. It was obvious. And Kamala Harris and all the Democrats gaslit all of us for the last three or four years. Oh, Joe Biden's perfectly fine. That man ain't running the country. He's gone. Joe Biden is a husk, an empty husk. 
okay, at this point. So who is the real people running this country? Those people, they want World War III badly. They want it badly. They can't wait to antagonize Russia, Iran, China. For decades, the biggest fear our government had was Russia and China coming together. It's why Richard Nixon went to China back in the 70s to try to smooth things out a little bit. He did not want them getting together. That was the fear. And now, and now, this foreign policy establishment that we have are pushing the, them together. And the world is rapidly, rapidly moving away from the Western rule of order. I've covered the BRICS here a lot. The BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, they have started a, 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 an economic alliance, and country after country after country after country are coming to them. African countries, Latin American countries, Middle Eastern countries, they are all abandoning the United States. A lot of them are abandoning the U.S. dollar, which will have dire consequences for all of us when it comes to things like inflation. If you think things cost a lot now, whew, wait until Saudi Arabia kills off the petrodollar for good. And so these people who are doing everything in their power to start World War III, to antagonize it with Russia over Ukraine, to antagonize it with Iran over Israel, and, and uh, Israel has 9 million people. 9 million. It's a small country. Iran has 90 million. 90 million. And they have nukes. Why do you think Israel feels like they can go and start attacking Iran and, and daring Iran to attack them? Because the foreign policy elites in this country told them that it's okay. That we'll have their back. And we're about to start it with China over Taiwan. So all this has happened in the last four years. I'm not saying it's solely Joe Biden's fault. I wouldn't say that because, again, I don't think Joe Biden is in charge. I just think that the foreign policy elites are rapidly escalating. their aggression against other the rest of the world. And this could have catastrophic consequences for all of us here and abroad. And so it's important to understand why these things are happening. Why they they are keep they keep finding funding for people who just got here yesterday. Yeah, they're getting ready. They know I'm not about to go fight their wars. I ain't going to fight. And thank God most American young people now are too smart to fall for that scam. So they're, they are preying on a weak and desperate people who are, who are coming with virtually nothing but the shirt on their backs and saying, come on in, come on in. Here's a billion dollars over the last two years. As the late great Tupac said, they got money for wars, but they can't feed the poor. Yeah. Here it is. Right there. All right, folks. When we get back, we're not, we're not moving totally away from immigration. We're going to talk about uh, who some of these people are we're letting in this country. We'll be right back after these. Oh, and later on, again, next hour, we're going to talk about the whole Jerome Prince fiasco and how it's just another, another brick in the wall 
of the legacy of corruption here in Lake County. We'll be right back after these folks. Straight out of Canada.